Real Madrid vs Atletico Madrid talk about the formation of both the teams. Real Madrid were playing in 4-3-3 formation and Atletico Madrid was playing in 5-3-2 formation. Real Madrid were building the game in traditionally back four in the first phase. Real Madrid were using double pures at the start of the match and Real Madrid's fullbacks were providing width by staying high and wide. Atletico Madrid were pressing with front two in the first phase but front two of the Atletico Madrid were dedicatedly not pressing the center backs of Real Madrid. The front two of the Atletico Madrid were central and narrow because of the front two of the Atletico Madrid were central and narrow the pures of the Real Madrid were being covered shadow by front two of Atletico Madrid. So with front twos of Atletico Madrid were narrow, the front two of the Atletico Madrid were blocking the passing lane of Real Madrid's pivots and was unable to receive the ball. So Real Madrid were being forced to build the game from wide. As we discussed, the Real Madrid's pivots were isolated behind the front two of the Atletico Madrid. So Real Madrid did a few variations. When Real Madrid were having trouble building the game centrally, one pivot was drifting wide from the center to receive the ball. Generally, he was Tony Cruz. So there were two passing options available in the vision for Real Madrid. The advantage of Tony Cruz being drifted wide was that when Tony Cruz was drifting wide, then Real Madrid left back Mendy had the license to push high and could contribute attacking wise by staying high on the pitch. Atletico Madrid's wide player were being pulled back as Mendy pushed high and Tony Cruz on the left hand side had space and time to build the game. In short, in the builder phase, a midfielder was drifting wide and the fullback was pushing high depending on which side the ball was on. On the other hand, the other side also had same mechanism. When the ball was on the right hand side, Luka Modric was drifting wide and due to his wide drifting, right back Carvajal was giving an attacking contribution by pushing high. Because Luka Modric was drifting wide, Real Madrid had an extra player to protect the wide zone and Real Madrid didn't have to worry. In the first phase, the Atletico Madrid frontman was not able to cover Luka Modric because of Atletico Madrid frontman being central and Luka Modric was free in the inside channel. On the other hand, Atletico Madrid's midfield was central, so Atletico Madrid was forced to push wing back Carrasco high to cover Luka Modric. Because Atletico Madrid were in the back five, the Atletico Madrid had four defenders even though one defender was high. In open play, Real Madrid were trying to overload the wide zone by placing more press in the wide zone. In open play, winger Fede Valverde was dropping in and Luka Modric was drifting wide. With Luka Modric and Fede Valverde in the wide zone with Carvajal, Real Madrid had three players in the channel. But when Fede Valverde was dropping in, Atletico Madrid's wide back was ready to track back Fede Valverde. As Atletico Madrid's wing back Carrasco was already pressing Real Madrid's full back and the Koke was on Luka Modric, so by neutralizing the numbers in the wide zone, Atletico Madrid was preventing Real Madrid attacking from the wide zone. On the other hand, Luka Modric and Tony Cruz were split wide alongside the center back, so both the Real Madrid's fullback were high enough to receive the ball. Because the Atletico Madrid's midfield was operating normally central, the wide zones were always open. Now let's talk about the open play system of Atletico Madrid. As we discussed, Atletico Madrid were playing in the 5-3-2 formation, but when Atletico Madrid were on the attack, Atletico Madrid were shifting into the back four. While Atletico Madrid was attacking, Atletico Madrid midfielder Koke drifted wide as a temporary fullback. You can see here Koke's position. Because of Atletico Madrid's midfielder Koke joining back line, Atletico Madrid were shifted in back four. The natural mechanism of the 5-3-2 formation is that when the teams attack, their wing backs provide width by staying high and wide, and Atletico Madrid wing backs Carrasco and Lorente were doing the same. With Koke joining the back line, Atletico Madrid were in the back four, and Atletico Madrid had an extra defender to defend wide zone. From a different perspective, Atletico Madrid were in the Traditionally back four, two central defenders and two fullbacks, which was giving Atletico Madrid defensively unique balance. Talking about the forwards of the Atletico Madrid, Griezmann and Felix were inside forwards. Griezmann was inside forward and he was moving in these areas and the Atletico Madrid wing back Carrasco was providing weed by staying high and wide. So Atletico Madrid had two attackers on the left hand side, so Real Madrid will must have to neutralize the wide zone. So Real Madrid push winger Fede Valverde into the defense to neutralize the wide zone. And you can see here Danny Carvajal and Fede Valverde defending wide and Real Madrid were defending in the back five. With Fede Valverde joining the back line, Real Madrid could defend one-on-one -on -one to forward Griezmann and wing back Carrasco. 
So in this way, Carlo and Celotti neutralized the white zone. On the other hand, fullback Carvajal and Fede Valverde were interchanging their position. If Carvajal was on wingback Carrasco, then Fede Valverde was on Atletico Madrid forward. And when Carvajal was on the Atletico Madrid forward, then Fede Valverde was on Atletico Madrid wingback. Now let's talk about the open play midfield of Atletico Madrid. In open play, Real Madrid's midfield was of four players: Vinicius Junior, Toni Kroos, Jaumeni, and Modric. And Real Madrid safe was 5-4-1. Because of Modric and Vinicius Junior were wide, Real Madrid were three versus two down centrally in midfield. As Griezmann and Felix were dropping in, and De Paul was inside, Toni Kroos and Jaumeni were three versus two down in front of Griezmann and Felix in midfield. Toni Kroos was committed to De Paul, so Real Madrid's defensive midfielder Chaumeni was two assists one in front of the Felix and Griezmann. On other hand, Griezmann and Felix split and could easily receive the ball close to the defensive midfielder.